so uh, we're at a point where we're in this hallway and we've got this interactive piece of the environment that doesn't really do anything but it's just there for having people click stuff to try to explore the environment. Uh, I'm not going to do the carpet but perhaps based on what we've already done you will be able to take one step outside the box to make the carpet do something. What I want it to do is to be able to click on uh, the right uh, hallway area and go to the next scene to the hallway. Or click on the left hallway area and it goes to the left. So right here we're going to have left and right. Um, so this will be sort of like the um, front gate where I just click on the gate and you go. Here I want to click on the right hallway to go to the right or the left hallway to go to the left. In order for this to be a clickable area, it needs to be have filled in with a solid color. So if I try to drop the paint bucket color right now into there, it, it won't drop because it's not a solid shape. So in a new layer, I'm going to create um, a hallway right clickable area. Let me just set it like this. So um, I've got actions, painting hallway, uh, I'll create a new layer, call it hall right. And I just want to draw a, um, a sort of simple area where I can click on. Again, I'm going to refine this a lot better. But the point is it needs to be a closed, it needs to be a closed shape. So that I can drop a color. Once I fully design the environment and fill in colors properly, it'll be better than this. But I just need some place to click on. Hall right in a brand new layer. There's this shape, which will turn into a symbol, which will give an instance name, which will give an event listener. Question. Together, we're not going to do that, but if you want to be able to click on the floor or the carpet or whatever, yes, you'd have to fill in the color of the thing you want to click on, okay. and then turn it into a symbol, and then an instance name, and then event listener. All right. So together, we will just do right hallway, left hallway. But first, let's just do, let's just do the right hallway. So some shape to click on on its own layer, I need to turn that into a symbol. So that shape that I drew here, that shape that I drew, F8, uh, we'll call this MC Hall Right. So that clickable area, it needs to be a symbol, and then it needs an instance. So that's a symbol, it needs an instance. We'll call this hall right underscore MC. that these objects need an instance name in order for us to interact. And then in our actions panel, we will say hall right mc dot add event listener on a touch tap comma function go hall right. We'll define the function, go hall right, we'll just simply go to that next scene. So once that has an instance name, I'll switch over to my actions. Hall right MC dot add event listener. Touch event dot touch tab comma fn 
go hall right function. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write it a little fast and then pause just because it's the same sort of thing we've done over and over. So there is that repetition sometimes. So this looks the same as before, and again, yes, uh, we do some things over and over. Something dot listen for a tap, run a function. Here's our function. Go all right, based on an event when we touch, pull and void, do stuff. The stuff will be, we'll go to the other scene. So I'll just pause right there. Um, sometimes you're able to copy and paste things and then just change a little bit of the detail. I could have copied that first you know, lines four through eight, I could have copied that and pasted it, and all I needed to change was, what's the thing I'm clicking on? Here it's the painting, here it's the hall area. Uh, here I'm running this function, here I'm running that function. Here I'm explaining, this function means this, this function means that. This will be a little different from here to here, but all of that basic syntax and basic setup is the same. We have then code that we've seen before to go somewhere. We can write it manually, or we can or we can copy it. Um, I'm going to go back to my welcome scene to copy and paste this piece. It's sort of either or. Is it going to be faster for me to type it or just copy it? So let me show you what I would do. I would go back to welcome. And I have, an, I have an instance right here, movie clip go to somewhere. So that's what, I, that's what I want. So back on your welcome, go find your go help, and just copy that part right there, go to somewhere. And then on the left here, pasting it into this spot that's waiting. And it has just one change. It's still the same about from the main timeline dot go somewhere. Frame one, name of some scene. So that'll save me a little effort, or if I want to type it, practice my typing skills. The only change that I need to do here now is it goes to SC Hall Right. Scene Hall Right. And of course, make sure you spell that exactly as what you called your scene. These scenes and anything can be called anything. Anything that you invent can be called anything, you just need to keep it consistent. Called mine scene hall right. So scene hall right. Question. Uh, will you be showing us um, I would like actually uh, publish it like upload it to the app store. Possibly, depending on um, our time. Um, what I've done before is I've created a supplemental video where people can watch it on their own and then do that because maybe optionally extra credit and so forth we'll see if we've got time in class but probably i'll create a separate video for that so that's a good point these apps that we make here you could once you get the final piece of the puzzle these could be published and uploaded to the real app stores you can give them away you can sell them for 99 cents or more if it's fully functional and you've got your own um, original material and copyright free music and such you can publish this to real app stores and make real money from it or upload it to new grounds or other sort of game sites uh, I don't think you can really upload it to Steam but you can put it on the app stores alright um, go ahead and test this this is uh, this is pretty easy pretty straightforward click on a thing go to a place the the catch of course is that the thing on screen needs to have an instance name you need to have spelled properly the name of your scene and such. So go ahead and save it and debug it and see if you tap towards the right and it goes to the right hallway. We'll do the left hallway a little later, but it'll be almost the exact same thing. When we do the left hallway, we need to draw a spot on the left, make it a symbol, give it an instance. Then we need hall left, MC, blah, 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 go left. Go hall left, 
go to in place and all that. We'll get to that. I want to test it right now to see if that works. No errors. I want to tap on the right area to go to the right. And I should see the right hallway and we're going to do some interesting things on the right hallway. Here we're going to start to introduce the possibilities of dying in the game or actually living. But anyway, I play that, open the gate, throw the rock, play with the painting if you want. Um, right hallway, tap that, goes to the right. That's all we need. So we need to go to the right, we have the right hallway, stuff will happen here. So after we tap to the right, we will go to the right. We will go to hall right. Okay, so the idea that's here, we've set it up that possibly everything here could be interactive. I could touch the painting and something happens. I could touch the, the closer door, something happens. There's a far door. For the purposes of time, we're, we're going to do uh, two things. Uh, we will do that if you go um, to that first, that ending door there, it'll take you to where you need to go. However, what's also going to happen on this scene is there will be a scary creature coming to kill you. And most of the time it will kill you. So the idea is something's coming at you from across the hallway, coming closer and closer and closer and closer. And if it gets close enough to you, like five seconds later, you're dead. And it takes you to scene, end bad and it takes you to you know to your tombstone so the idea will be that sort of like the time limit that we did with the boss on the tap frenzy if in a certain amount of time you tap the boss enough you won't die but I'm gonna make it hard on purpose I'm gonna make it that you have to tap the boss a hundred times so if the person is fast enough a hundred times they will live this is going to be one of these that most likely, most of the time, a person will not be able to tap fast enough. I don't know, I'll put a thousand taps, whatever. There's a possibility that maybe they'll be able to kill the boss. And so two things need to happen. If I tap on the door, if boss has been killed, go through the door. Or else, boss has not been killed, nothing happens, until the time limit where the boss gets you. So we're going to have a creature coming at you in X amount of time. If you don't do it in time, you die. And um, this will be introducing a few concepts of uh, 
if else and such. Let me see what I've got here is in my case I accidentally drew everything again on the same layer. It's an easy fix there. So I've got actions layer and actions layer and the main scene. I want to turn that door, I want to turn that far door into a clickable thing. So I want to start to separate that door from its background. Let's say hall right door. All right, main door. Because if I want to, we're not going to do it together. We won't quite have time. But if we wanted, to, if you wanted to do it, there's a second door that could do something. There's also the painting that could do something. I'm going to focus on that. This door, yes, will let you go forward, but on the condition that you've killed the boss. But the boss will be very difficult to kill. So this room, this screen, <coughs> this screen will probably kill your players. So I've separated the door to its own layer, and I'll turn it into a symbol. Uh, MC hall right main door. So that door on its own layer, as usual, symbol. instance name hall right hall right main door underscore MC So at the end of the hallway, there is an object on its own layer with an instance name. Remember to press enter when you type that instance name. I didn't, and then it went away. Remember to press enter. What was the instance name for it? Hall right. Main door MC. I called it the same thing as my layer and then just added MC at the end. Okay, well, I want that to be clickable. Here comes an event listener to listen for it to be clicked. But then we'll have a little difference. If boss equals dead, um, go forward. Or else, boss is not dead. Don't go forward yet. So in our code, we need to have the name of the object dot add event listener. Touch event. Touch tap, comma, function go hall right endings.
here we will either get to the good ending or the bad ending. Function definition. So that's not new. We've done that before. And again, if you get those pop-ups that it automatically writes for you something like import flash event, you can ignore it. If it doesn't pop up for you, that's fine. But we've got a stop here, so nothing happens yet. That door is clickable. I'm also going to write a comment here. I know I'm going to forget this. Remove this. So the so the mini boss comes after you. So that stop will have to be removed eventually. And I'll probably forget about it, so I'll put a big old note there. Um, we have to build it up piece by piece. We're going to first set it that let's try to open the door. Once we get that fully working, then we will add here comes a boss. Let's kill the boss before we can open the door. Whoops, we didn't kill it because it needed a thousand hits in two seconds. So. It'll get us and it'll go to the bad ending. Alright, well, inside this function, check if the boss, the mini boss, is dead or not. So we have if else and then a quick note and if else to check if mini boss dead first trace is dead so go to scene and good is not dead so stay here We're, we're going to have that timer that the boss is coming at us. Five seconds, it's going to get to us. So something else is going to trigger the, the death ending, scene end bad. But here we've got the... Um, but here we've got the... Uh, the ability to to check uh, has the boss been killed or not That's a long line up there. Make sure you type that in properly. Function go hall write endings.
Okay, so previously we had um, on the tap frenzy, we had we had our time limit, four seconds. Here's the boss. And then we were tapping the boss. It had zero hit points. We were tapping the boss. When boss hit points is greater than 10, it's dead. So if boss hits greater than 10, you win. Or else nothing happens. You're still tapping it. Then four seconds is over. If four seconds is over, then the game ends on the tap frenzy. Something similar here. Uh, this, however, uh, it'll have hit points, but we will do it slightly different in terms of uh, is it dead or not. So something else will be keeping track of the hit points. And um, the, this if else will just keep, up tr keep track of true or false. So the boss will be uh, similar to the painting. I tap the painting. And after a certain number of times, the painting falls. Well, the boss, I want to tap the boss, and it'll be wincing or whatever as I'm hitting it. And then if I do tap, manage to tap it a thousand times or whatever, then it goes to a dead animation. And then when it's dead, this will change to true and so forth. Question? So then will most functions be in the scope of bosses, or will it be like... The, um, if you set up a function on frame one, scene one, it will always then be available to use. But this function doesn't exist until you know my fifth scene, so it's it has not loaded into memory yet. So once the code loads into memory, then it's useful from now on. But this code never existed until the user has moved and gone to this scene, and then it loads up, and then we can use it. Well, what about the functions we have already created? Can those uh, be in the scope of this frame? Yeah, those things that we created on a previous scene. So technically, in memory, what's still floating around is the ability to click on the help button. But there's no help button on this screen, so there's nothing to click on, nothing nothing loads up. So yep, those things that we previously loaded, they're still hanging around in memory. Okay, so right here, we're going to have, we're going to set up a few variables. So let's actually back up here. Boolean variable to um, keep track of boss mini boss death. P A R. Um, all right, boss dead. Colon boolean equals false. We previously had variables that were set to numbers. I want to keep track of a number. Uh, we have another kind of variable called a boolean, which is just a fancy term of true or false. So either the boss is dead or not. And when we get to this scene, the boss is not dead. We just got to this scene. The mini boss is not dead yet. So we've set this variable to be in the memory of false. So here we will check if all right boss is equal to true. Somehow we got it to true. Take us to the good ending. By default, when we get here, it'll be set to false. So when we try to click the door, it's set to false. If this is true, do this. Nope, it's set to false. Jumps here. Nothing happens, just a message. The, uh, the result of it being set to true, which we still need to fill in right here. We'll do that in a moment. But the result of if this ever becomes true, when, when the game starts, it's false. The boss is not dead yet. If it ever becomes true, we move to the other scene. And this is the example again about just, I'm going to copy and copy that code from somewhere else. I don't retype it myself. Movie clip, go to and play. Movie clip, go to and play. Scene, end, good.
in the parentheses we're checking for if the thing is true. So we'll just say if Hall right boss dead is true, take us to the good ending, or else it's not true, keep us here. I'll just copy and paste it so I don't misspell it. Hall right boss dead. We, uh, we are checking right here if this thing that we're checking is true. So we can check for um, a technical term known as truthiness. It's not a, it's not a fake word that Stephen Colbert invented. Um, it is a thing in programming. Something is true, truthy, or falsy um, when we evaluate here. So we're checking. Right now, when we created this variable, we've said it's false. This variable has built into it the value of false. An if-else statement is going to check, is something true? This is always checking for truth, truthiness. Is 1 greater than 2? False. Is 1 greater than 0? True. So if statements are always checking for true. So that when something is true, you do the first block. Or else it's got to be false, you do the second block. Here, we're checking again. If the thing in the parentheses is true, go to the good ending. This cannot be because we said it right away as false. But for the moment, we can save it and test it. We can get up to this scene. We can try to tap the door. It should then say at the bottom, not dead yet. Well, the boss is not even there yet. We're getting to that. We should be able to tap on the door and get the message, not dead yet. Then what we could do to test it, the good ending, after we test it, bad ending, I mean, after we test it, nothing happens. I can go back here and say, all right, boss is equal to true. And then when I play the game to this point, if this is equal to true, I'll get this message, and then I'll go to that scene. So let's try that. Save it and run it. Go to this, go to the right hallway, tap the door. It's not finished yet, so it should tell us not dead yet. If I confirm that, I'll go back and set it to true. True, truth will be set when, the, when we create the boss coming at us, tap it a thousand times, and we will then say boss is equal to true, boss dead is equal to true, and then we can try to tap the door. So get back to the code in a moment, I'll press play, go through the front door, throw the rock, Go to the right hallway. I'm in there. No error so far. I tap the door. It's not dead yet. So every time I tap it, it's not dead yet. It checks. Has that become a true? Nope. It's still not dead. But I'm getting the reaction that I'm tapping it. And then, like I said, I can go back and set that to true just to test it. I definitely want to set back set that back to false. This is just for internal testing. Oops, it's covering it. But set your hall right boss to true instead of false just to test it because I know that this part happened. They check, is it true or false? It's false. Jump here. Skip that. I set it manually to true. Is this true? Is true equals true? Yes. So do this part. Let's check it again. So, play, door, rock, right hallway, tap, is dead, go to end, uh, go to end. So this is the good ending, where it says you're not dead. Congratulations, you're not dead. Definitely set that back to false. That was just to test it. Let me do a little pause there. Did that work? Is uh, anything anything off? So Boolean variable to keep track of it's dead or not. Yes.
So imagine this, okay, true false. We can set this up for other things in the game. Um, let's say uh, back on the hallway where there was that uh, carpet on the ground. When we got to the main hallway scene, we could have var rug pulled boolean equals false. We could have in memory that we've never pulled on the rug. We set up the event listener just like we have for the painting that when we interact with the rug it does an animation but then it has when we kill the boss we would have you know rug, don't type this rug equals true. So now that that's in memory we can do something if else, if rug is true, do something. But for us here, there's a boss that's going to come at us. So if this part works, it's time to make the mini boss. Uh, I think before we proceed, let's comment out that stop because I'm going to forget it. So we no longer want this to stop. We want to get to this scene and actually then play an animation of a boss at the end of the hallway coming at us and in X amount of time, five seconds, if you don't kill the boss in five seconds, it takes you to scene um, bad ending. So I'll create a new layer. Mini boss. draw some sort of evil thing. Something that's going to cover the door. towards the, the end of the hallway, use your skills in perspective uh, to draw something that looks like it's in the scene. Um, and I'm drawing it far away over there. The idea is, I could do this a couple of ways. I could do this that first what I see when a person comes to the screen is, oh, there's a hallway. Let me try to interact. One second later, the boss appears and then I have to deal with it. Or I could set it up that as soon as a person comes into the scene, there's already a thing out there. And it's coming right at me. And then I can start tapping it. Let me, let me kill it. I'm going to try to get it. And if I can kill it in time, you know, I animate it that it dies. And then now the door is visible over there. So let's say, you know, it's dead over here. And then the door is there and I can try to tap on it. And the boss is dead. So it will, um, it will let me go through. Okay, I'm going to turn that into a symbol. MC Mini Boss. Needs an instance name. Mini Boss MC. So the usual. Anything that's interactive, it has to have an instance name and so forth. Okay, so this object is a symbol, it has an instance name. It can be interactive in a moment. We're going to use the timeline itself 
as our sort of timer. So for all, for all of our frames, all of our layers, I want to extend the frames to five seconds. F5 for all of the layers. So you can select all of them at 120, five seconds, F5. So all all frames have all layers have up to 120 frames, five seconds. There's a five second timer. Without doing the code, it's just five seconds. So on frame 120 of the actions layer, I will have a uh, command here, go to the bad ending. When the person comes to this, the timer starts, five seconds. And if the playhead gets to 120, I wasn't able to tap the boss enough, I go to the bad ending. So on frame uh, 120, I need an F7 there. I need a blank keyframe. Something new is going to happen. On frame 120, a new blank keyframe, actions later. What happens here is the code, go to and play, and bad. On the final frame, I've chosen five seconds, you can do 10 seconds, three seconds, whatever. On the final frame, my actions layer, time's up. Movie clip, go to and play, the bad end. You didn't tap the boss enough. I uh, don't want it to just be stationary there at the end of the hallway. I want it to come at me. So I will create a motion tween, just like the uh, Tap Frenzy game, that I want it to be at the end of the hallway, and then grow bigger, coming at me in perspective. Motion tween should be able to do that pretty easily. So on, I, on my boss, uh, my boss layer frame one, I can right click, create motion tween. So now I have all in between, the layer becomes blue. And what I want is at the end, frame 120, I want to make that object larger. And also maybe move it over a little bit. And so here, in five seconds, it's getting closer. I don't know, maybe like really big like this so that it's like really in your face to eat your face. So obviously when it plays on the actual device, these edges where it's going off of the canvas, well, you know, obviously it's, you're only gonna see it in the actual tablet. Uh, but here it's you know getting so close that when five seconds is up uh, Visually it's right there at you, but then you've reached the five seconds you didn't tap it in time which we have not programmed yet, but um, It gets at you in five seconds Reaches frame 120 goes to the bad end and This is happening with a motion tween Frame one it's far away at the end of the hallway 
final frame, just click on the final frame and then scale it with the free transform tool, make it bigger, make it closer, whatever. And then after five seconds, it'll go to the bad ending. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna test it. I drew the boss on a layer above everything, so it should be covering the background. The order of the layers matter. And when I go to play to that scene, right hallway, here it is coming right at me. You know, tapping does nothing, but I've got these five seconds, it's coming closer, it got to me, came over got to the 120 seconds so it reached the final it reached the final frame 120 There's 120 frames for it to get you. There's 120 frames for us to write code to tap it to kill it. That'll be the final thing that we'll do. Then we'll do a little lab time. Um, but we're, we're almost there for the moment in terms of we've set up a door that is clickable, but boss dead is set to false. So nothing happens if you click on it. We have this boss that we need to create an event listener to keep track of clicks which eventually if we tap it enough times and I'll make it easy I'll make it after five clicks it dies but I do want it very high most likely in a way that is not attainable because I want this ending to I want them to go to the right side and, and it's pretty much a game over direction um, but I'm gonna tap on the boss enough times for it to be boss dead equals true then animate it or move it out of the way so that it's dead and then when they try to tap the door, now it'll check if boss dead is true, let me go forward. Well, that will work by adding the code. This is in the main actions uh, layer of the hall right, set boss hit points, PAR, hall right, mini boss points, it's a number set to zero, haven't started battling the boss yet. This will be reminiscent of what we did with the, the boss in the Tap Frenzy. When we get to this scene, we have not tapped the boss yet. get to the scene we have not tapped the boss yet so let's make the boss tappable whatever the name of your instance of your boss is event listener touch tap comma some function that function is going to do several things it's going to increment this value we've tapped it one time so hall right mini boss plus plus then it's going to check if these points are greater than or equal to 10 I'll do it easy first you know, 10 or 5 then it's dead, remove it, set the, set the boolean value to true, and then the person can try to open the door. So if this is not dead, then again, if we've not tapped it enough, we know that the, that the door is set to false, so it won't open. So we have uh, touch event, 
dot touch tap fn mini boss hits function mini boss hits So the boss now is tappable. We will then say hall, write mini boss points plus plus. We never <clears throat> we never tapped the boss when we got to this scene. Zero. Now we tap the boss and one. Then we check the conditional statement. If something is true, do something, or else it's false, do something else. If else code, I'm about to check if we've hit the boss enough versus we have not hit it enough. If hall write mini boss points is greater than or equal to, let's do it easy, 5. Eventually I'll put something like 555. But for the moment to test it, if we have tapped the boss at least 5 times, it's going to die. It's going to set the boss dead value to true. And if a person tries to tap the door, if this is true, go to the good end. This becomes true when we've got the condition of more than five hits. And here, we'll say, all right boss, dead is equal to true. set up a way to touch the boss, to tap the boss, which we've done several times before. We've added one value to those hits. We did that on the previous game. We've uh, checking conditions. Remember, this is checking for something to be true. Just have to figure out what's the condition. Right now, the very first time, it's you know zero. Is zero greater than five? False. So else happens. If I tap it enough times, boss becomes uh, dead true. The person tries to tap the door. True is true, so it lets you go forward. Also, what we want to do is um, remove the um, remove the boss. You know, you've tapped it enough, and we'll make it animate in a way. But uh, I think for the moment, we'll just remove it. Uh, we we have the ability to remove things from the screen. 
This is remove child. So the remove child command, now you need to put in quotes, what is the name of the object on the screen that you want to remove? You know, what's, what's the name of it? So remove child, quotes, uh, the, bo yeah, the boss is mini boss underscore MC. Yes. A statement on top where it says that the boss is dead. Mm -hmm. um, when we have to check if it uh, becomes true, though, like the equality, like the double report? That would work as well, but a shortcut to check if something is true is just to write it this way as well. Okay. So, yes, we have the classic double equals true, but a shortcut is checking that because by default, an if is always checking if something is true. So it's just going to evaluate what's in the variable. And at the beginning, what's in the variable equals false. So it goes to else. Here, it's evaluating it, and it sees true is true. So it, it, it works. But double equals true will also work as well. OK, so uh, here uh, we hit the boss x number of times. x is 5. If we do hit it enough times, uh, boss then gets set to, to true. We also remove that graphic out of the way, out of the screen. I want to animate it so that it looks like it's dying and so forth, but we don't have time just yet. Uh, in order to do that, what I could do is I would need to do some animation in the symbol of the mini boss, kind of like the painting, and have it do uh, mini boss dot play frame seven where 7 is the death animation. Then at the end of the animation of the boss, then it's got the remove child at the end of the timeline of the death animation of the boss. We'll see if we can do it in class, but this is, this is enough. It will remove it from the screen. It will set it to true. A person tries to tap the door now that they see a door. It should then be, uh, is boss dead true? Go to the good ending. Uh, with else, um, nothing really needs to happen here. We could have just a trace message and say um, boss not dead yet. And I think we can test it at this point. See the logic of it. We've got the boss with an instance name. We've got the ability to tap on it. We increment the value starting at zero once we get to five or more. Flips it to true and removes it from the screen. Person taps on the door. True is true. Go to good ending. If we have one tap, one is not greater than five, so it skips this part and just makes a message. Boss is not dead yet. If the timeline goes up to five, if we don't tap it in time, it automatically then, the timeline at frame 120 takes us to the bad ending. I'm going to save it and run it and see if that worked. Oops, maybe got a little error here. That's happening with my errors. Coercion of string, remove child, mini boss. Oh, I uh, guess we don't need a quote on that. Uh, okay, yeah. I Yes, we don't need a quote. Yeah, that's it. Okay, oops, I covered it there. If you got a message, an error message, um, no string. We have remove child, the name of the object, no quotes. There's one that needed quotes, but no quotes. Remove child, mini boss, no quotes. I'll give that a try. So play, gate, rock. Right hallway, tap it fast enough. There we go. Oops, did it too fast. But it was coming at me, and um, the uh, I tapped it enough times down there. Yet it says, "Boss, not dead, not dead, not dead. Is dead." So after I tapped it enough times, then it goes to the good ending. So 
maybe in my play testing here, I need to m arrange things slightly different because I just tapped really fast, but my finger was also tapping in the place where the door was, so without even looking, I tapped on the door. That code should be working. I just need to rearrange things on the screen a little bit so that they line up properly. But yeah, that's, that's the code there. Question. The final frame 120 is simply is right here to go to the bad ending. We have those five seconds to get to. We never get. We never tap the boss in time, and therefore we get to the bad ending. I just had to tap it five times, and then it died. Again, I want this to be almost an unwinnable scenario. Um, so I'm going to put it up to, you know, a hundred taps. As I test it myself, I could time myself. Okay, I think I can. I think if I try really hard, I can tap it a hundred times. So maybe I'll put it like at the maximum range that a, that a person could possibly do it, because maybe we. We do want the ability for the person to possibly win. Uh, I'm probably going to put, you know, uh, 9,999 so that I can write in the comments it's over 9,000. Anyway, so then I will um, have it to a point where it's not going to be clickable and I will always get the bad ending. Um, that's just what I, what I want to do to mess with the player. So there we go. If the player in five seconds can tap it 9,999 times, they win. Or maybe 99 times. So if they can tap the boss 99 times in five seconds, they will win. Okay, well, um, at this point, I'll. I'll, I'll end the lecture and I'll put my code into the folder in case you need a copy of it. We can check that your code works. Uh, we did a lot today in terms of interacting with the project, clicking on things that change the environment. Then we've got a pseudo timer going on in the time of the hallway as our timer. Uh, we've got uh, tapping on things to generate true or false. We've got the ability to click on something uh, behind the boss. Click on something, but something has to be true in order for that to react how we want. The true comes from battling the boss. But again, think about it in terms of, well, what if there has to be a puzzle here? What if the person has to first open up the painting, it'll flip open, then they can try to get to the door. So. I can get to the scene and I have something set to false, anything. Painting moved, false. Then I create the event listener to make the painting be behave. Tap the painting, so then it has a painting moved equals true. So then the door, right now, if you try to tap the door, you go to good. But to be really tricky, you know, if I don't even have the boss here and I have that door, if I never touch the painting first, I could have, instead of trace something, just a message, I could have it go to and play bad ending. So the person has to play it again and say, okay, what about if I tap the painting first, then it's a good ending. If I try to tap the door by itself first, it was never true, so it goes to the bad ending. 